All right, so here we are back. We're on page 20, getting ready to do our next block, which is the cake block. All right, so if you remember, we already cut the cake top layer and the cake middle and labeled them because one is out of the white stripe and one is out of the red words. All right, you're going to need some red leather so you want to dig that out. You're going to need um, the um, silver felt. And that is for the stand. So the silver embroidery leather is for the tray. And it's going to be five by three so you might have a piece that's already been cut five by three or you might have a whole piece so you're you know you want to set it up where you only use the you know one half of this piece because you still need a piece of silver for something else it's like one and a half inches by the five um, and that is for the um, the pie plate so don't put it in the middle you know you if you want to cut this you can I'm not going to cut it I have one big piece, you might have two smaller pieces. All right, so you're gonna need the um, silver leather for the tray. So we have the background fabric that we're going to need. All right, and if I go down through here, the cake background is going to be our blue words. So, watermelon background piece. I just lost where I was. All right. White on white words is the cake background. Okay. So the white on white words is really this one. It's like a yellowish word on white. All right. So this is our cake background. Okay. Now the cake background takes a lot of this, all right? So when I look at this, the cake background is eight by 12, eight and a half by 12 and a half. It's this whole piece down at this end, all right? Then the other piece we need out of here is a pieced block that's two by three and a half inches. You need that to be exact, two by three and a half, all right? And then we're going to do the pie background as well out of this fabric. And that is a piece that's eight and a half by six and a half. All right. So I'm using the eight and a half as the nine because your strip. And then I'm only measuring up six and a half for that. And if I look at this, that should be, I didn't mark it, but that's the six and a half one. All right. So this is your background for the cake. The background for the pie one when we get there and a pieced block so these are the three pieces that you need cut up for the cake all right so that's going to be the background of the cake so that takes care of this light tannish color and the white with a dotted type color so those three pieces get cut out of the white with the words and then we still need to get a few more things for the cake one is um the cake bottom layer we were using the blue the light blue with the words to do that so then the cake would be this red let me flip this over it would be the red on the top of the cake then the white in the center of the cake and then this blue for the bottom of the cake so red white and blue for our cake <clears throat> all right so out of the blue words we're going to get the cake bottom all right we also are going to get a piece block so the cake bottom is five by three the piece block is two by three and a half like all the other piece blocks and then the other piece of this is the background piece for and where's my blue words 
the watermelon background. So the eight and a half by six here is the watermelon background. All right, so we need this one. Here's those two that we cut already. So I need this cut and I need the light blue cut. And then we have our silver to go in there. We have our other two layers of the cake. The piece that is also um, that we want to get is we want to get our icing. All right, so we have our, um, I'm looking for the icing. The icing is on the, um, okay, so our cake icing is on page nine for embellishments, okay? So the cake top layer frosting is three and a half by two, and the bottom layer frosting is five by two and a half. All right, so that's eight and a half inches. And what I'm gonna do is I believe we can get it all out of an eight inch piece of leather. So I'm not going to cut this leather. We'll lay one down and tack it and everything and trim it, and then we'll take the rest and lay it down on the other piece. All right, so we are going to do all the icing in the white leather. Okay, I'm not using pink felt like it calls out um, in the instructions. So I need that piece as well. All right, so again, they, they layered the icing of the cake was in the embellishment. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get um, my fabric cut here and we'll double check that we have everything we need. All right, so we have this eight and a half by six inch piece, which is the background for the watermelon. So I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so this is the watermelon background. So I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna set it aside because I don't need that right now. All right, so also out of this material, I'm gonna get my two inch by three and a half inch, right, block. And again, that's a piece to block. So two inches by one, two, three and a half, all right. I'm going to turn it around this way and cut it because um, it was cut a little long because of the um, tear or the edge of the fabric. Oh, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to turn it this way because I know I need to cut this, this side off. So I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line it up on the half mark. And I have one lined up here, the top lined up there. Hold that and just trim this little edge off. All right, so this is the piece block. So again, I'm going to throw this piece to block piece right in here, all right, with all the others. So right now I have four of them cut. Now I have the bottom layer of the cake is five inches by three inches, all right? So you're not going to have a lot of this, the um, blue word fabric left. No big deal. We, we have enough to do what we need. So this is what's extra. So this is the bottom layer of the cake. All right. I'll put that on this pile over here. And now I'm going to work with the white fabric with the gold lettering. So this is the background of my cake. And it's only supposed to be eight and a half, right? So I know it's like gnawing something. I'm not gonna worry about that. I am just going to cut this straight across here. And this is the background of the cake, right? This next piece was six and a half wide, right? Again, this is the pie background. So I'm gonna take that one I'm just going to reuse these little sticky pads because, you know, no, no problem, you know, no worry about getting another one. This is the pie background. 
right now. I'm going to set that one aside for later. And then right in here again, I have another pieced block. Three and a half by two. And I actually measured that wrong. It ended up being two and a half by two. Oh, it, it does say two by three and a half. Let me double check that. I just wanted two by three and a half. Um, the white with words, background eight and a half by six and a half, cake background eight and a half by 12 and a half, and the pieced block two by three and a half. So I need this to come down three and a half. So I didn't really have that long enough. I was short almost an inch. All right, so there's my two inch. All right, I have this little bit extra. So I wanna line this up on the three and a half mark. I'm lining the twos up on both sides and I'm just gonna trim this little piece off here. So there is another pieced block all right I'm gonna throw that one in here okay and this was what was left of the white with the gold words or yellow words all right I'm gonna set that aside now we're gonna go back through our pieces for the cake just to make sure that I have all the pieces so I'm on page 20 all right, I need the background. Here's my background for my cake. I need the top layer of the cake is red. There's the top layer. The middle layer is white. The bottom layer is blue. There's my cake. I need the pink embroidery for the top of the frosting. I'm doing it in white leather. So there's my top frosting. Is I only need like three inches of this three and a half by two. Then we have the bottom layer frosting. Again, white leather. And it does call it out as um, um, embroidery felt, but I, again, want to use it to be, I want leather for the frosting. I think it'll look a lot nicer. Then you need the silver embroidery leather for your tray. And again, this is only like supposed to be um, five by like three inches. All right, so I'm gonna place it so I'm only using part of this leather, and so I'm not gonna trim the leather down. And you need the cherry red leather. You need a small square, two by two, for the red pinwheel. And we need a navy square of leather for the blue pinwheel. All right, so here's my blue, and it only needs to be two and a half by two and a half, and so I'm going to place this just to use the bottom half. I'm not going to pre-cut my square. I'm just going to place it so my pinwheel fits in there. And you'll be able to do that because it's going to give you a placement line of where to set it. So these are all the things that I need for the cake. Again, light mesh cutaway. And this cake is a 6x10 design. So I'm back anyway using the big hoop. So I still have my hoop out. So I am going to go load my um, stabilizer in. Gonna move over to the other side. We're gonna um, then talk about our quilting design and loading in our embroidery design and get started. So I'll meet you over at the machine. Before I go over there, I do wanna point out um, the red to me seems fine um, as far as being like see-through-ish. Uh, it is a darker fabric. If you want to put shape flex on it, that's up to you on the red. This light blue, the white, and all of my background. I am going to put shape flex on all of these, okay? So again, I'm going to cut my shape flex a little smaller than the size. I'm going to fuse it to the back of um, these three for sure. And again, if you have like a little piece and you want to, you know, put some on the red, then go ahead and do that. I mean, it it is darker than the others, 
um, so it won't be as bad. But these three, I'm definitely going to put Shape Flex on and then meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so I did have um, Shape Flex added. I did add some to the red because I had a little piece left anyway. And here's my Shape Flex here. Again, remember, I cut it short. I don't go all the way to the edge. I don't take a chance on, you know, I don't need it that big um, because, you know, we ha we allow extra for um, Kimberbell's um, block background blocks, so it, you know I don't want to waste my shape flex. So I you know I always cut it short because I don't want to glue anything to my um, embroidery, uh, my um, iron or the ironing board. All right, so we're working on cake block number five. This great big block. So this big block. Again, they're suggesting this particular quilting design, Patri Patriotic number three, and they're telling you to open the six by 10 size. All right, so again, I'm going to clear blue tiles. I'm going to scroll design the block by block, and I'm going to pick the six by 10 one. And that's what I'm gonna load in my hoop. And then after I load that in my hoop, I'm going to go select the um cake right i'm going to go open up the embroidery file here that it calls out for the cake all right so i need the six by ten cake design all right so i'm sure when i open the cake design it's all going to be like vertical in my hoop i'm going to be looking at it vertically so that's fine and again, it should open it up right directly in the center of my screen. All right. So I don't have to move anything around. And when I say OK, I hope, I hope it didn't move. But what I can do is I'll switch over and I'll pan up a little bit and see if you you can kind of see my scroll design there and you kind of see the cake in the background so that's the block we're working on and you can see that's what the quilting's going to look like around it no big deal and this one has just like the cherry design it will have a um background fabric put down so i'm going to do the quilting file exactly the way that it says to do it, which is it's going to first do the big rectangle and show me where to place my batting. So I want to go ahead and hit start. And I want to, um, I want to know where to put my batting. And I know my batting's got to be about six and a half inches wide. I don't know if this piece is six and a half wide or not. it um, comes back up to me and I just happen to have the um, dark gray in all right so this piece down here is not wide enough so let's see what I can do here is this one going to be wide enough See if I lay this one up here. All right, it's not wide enough at that end. So I am going to trim my batting real quick here to get to this wider part of it, but I'm going to do it with a ruler and kind of make a straight line as possible here. You know, so, you know, at least that batting, you know, even though it wasn't wide enough for this square, I might be able to use it for another square or like a mug rug. So that's why I keep all my little pieces of batting because the mug rugs really aren't that big of an item. 
So little pieces of batting do really well. All right. So I'm just going to lay my batting on there. I think this will be just fine. I'm going to hit start. I'm doing number two of the quilting design, right? And number two of that, the, the stitch number two is going to tack down my batting. So it's going to go around it twice. And again, it's this big rectangle. And once it's done with that, I will trim the excess batting away so I have no batting in my seams. And you can see, you know, you see the design we just did, the cherries there. I just, again, hooped it um, as close as I could. I don't like to put the, uh, the, the design there, the design we did before this, in between my two hoops because I don't want it to be that thick but at least I have it close enough where I, you know, am saving a little bit of stabilizer when I do it this way. All right, it's almost done. When this is done, I'm gonna trim the excess batting away and then we will return to the next step. All right, I'm back. So I trimmed the batting. Now why I trimmed the batting I did go ahead and put white thread in. I changed it out because I know I'm going to be quilting soon. And I'm going to do that in white. So I went ahead and changed that while I had the, the hoop. Because um, I had to actually take the hoop off the machine to cut all the way around um, this big piece of batting. So now I'm going to run number three of the quilting design. Which is going to show me where to place my fabric this time. And again, it basically does a stitch about a quarter inch away from the batting all the way around. So you want to make sure you cover that placement line all the way around. Okay, you don't want to be short because that's what all the fabric you need in the seam allowances when we go to sew all these blocks together. So it's almost done. All right, now I want to get my background fabric so you can look at the fabric and say you know do I want it to look that way do I want it to look this way because you can flip it around I mean again the words are in all different kinds of directions um, so it's up to you which way you want to place it now what I like to do is I like to look left to right first and say okay I have both sides more than a quarter inch away and then I'm going to pull it up. And then I'm going to be like rolling this one edge over just a little bit and saying, okay, I have this much at the top and I have plenty at the bottom. So I am good because I already did the left and right. Now I just worry about the top and bottom. And you can feel the batting underneath there and know that you have enough um, on either side. So now what I'm going to do is stitch number four of the quilting and we're going to tack this down on the foam. So we're going to tack down our background fabric. So again, it's just going to go around and it's doing like a basting stitch, not a real tight stitch. And that's just in case this stitch kind of gets caught up in the seam for some reason or you see it because it's not in the seam allowance that you could pick it out easy, all right? But normally you're not going to see the stitch at all. It's going to be well in the seam allowance when we go to sew everything together. All right, the next step is number five of the quilting design, which is the actual quilting itself. So it's going to do the swirls again. So we're doing the swirl design in the quilting and that's what's gonna be on here. And again, I'm doing my quilting all in white. I'm just making it all blend together. And, you know, here, again, I'm just using my clear blue tile. I'm using what I have in that collection. Um, if you wanted to go buy the collection specifically called out for this particular um, pillow, you can. I'm going to encourage you to use the affiliate link. Um, on the store site to get it so Bunny gets some credit. Um, we get a commission on that if you use our affiliate link. So you can go, you know, two ways to get there. You could go from 
the actual picture on Facebook. There's a link attached to it under our site. So what, Delaware? Um, or if you go to so what de dot com and go specifically to our website and you type in um, instant and look at all the instant downloads you can find the one for this pillow the sweet land of liberty you can type in sweet land of liberty and you'll see there's a link there underneath the picture when you go into it to either get the quilting design get the pattern download or to order the fabric kit so the only one that we supply at the shop is the fabric kit. If you want that specific quilting bundle or the pattern itself with all the embroidery designs, those are instant downloads right from Kimberbell's site. So if you use our website and link over to Kimberbell, we will get credit for that. So that's the same for all of those things that are out there on the So What website. I'm trying to add them as we go. Um, any of the things that I think you might enjoy or want to do, um, if you search so what and then use that link to go out, that's the easiest thing to do. If you find you want a link that's not existing, by all means call the shop. Let us know so that we can get that link loaded up or we can email it to you right away so you can go use it so we get credit. All right. So it's almost done with the quilting. So I'm going to look at um, the instructions on page 20. Uh, number one is load the embroidery file into the machine. And we have done that because, um, you know, I already did my quilting. So the first stitch, it calls for some sc um, scroll and pinwheel stems that come off the top of the cake. And it is suggesting that charcoal gray. So I am, excuse my arm when it goes in the way of the camera, loading the gray back into my machine so that we can do those little stems for the pinwheels and the decorations on the top of this cake. So once I get my gray loaded, I'm gonna hit start and do step one of the embroidery file. I still have a white bobbin in, just so you guys know. I mean, you might have had to change your bobbin already. All right, I did a small change because I didn't use a full bobbin when I started. Um, to me, there's not a lot of um, embroidery going on. I mean, we're at on number five, block number five. Sorry, block number four, right? One, two, three, block number four. So I think like two bobbins might do it. We'll find out when we're done. But um, here we go. It's still doing some of those scrolls. Little loopies. If I read ahead, step number three of the um, instructions say to stitch the top layer placement line. And then we are going to lay it down and we're going to tack it down. Now, it specifies no specific color for doing all of that. So, I looks like I could do everything else here right now, right in the um, gray. The gray will get covered up with a satin stitch, so I can leave the gray in until we get to a real color on the step. So I'm going to get my first layer of the cake out, and I am going to trim this little thread here that started. Almost done with the little scrolls. <clears throat> So now we're on step three of the instructions. We're going to stitch number two of the embroidery, and it's going to show me where to place the top layer of the cake. 
All right, and our top layer of the cake is the color red. We're doing our cake red, white, and blue. So our top layer are these red words. All right, so you can look at the fabric if you wanted to turn it around one side, if you like it one way versus another way. Again, that's up to you. And I did put some shape flex on the back of the fabric. I'm just trimming that jump stitch out of there. So this is where I need to place it. So I'm just going to lay it up here and see which way I might want to lay this. So I'm going to lay it just like that. I shouldn't see any of the placement line underneath. And I don't. I'm going to hit start and I'm going to tack this down. I'm going to assume again that it's going to go around the object twice to tack it in place. And when it is done tacking it down, we will trim the fabric away. I'm going to pull my hoop close to me. And I'm going to get up in here and I am going to trim the fabric away. So there's like a straight line at the bottom. And then we get into these um, like curly lines where you have, you know, mountains and valleys to kind of cut around. So you want to cut close to the stitch line, but don't cut the stitch line, right? We want to keep our fabric tacked down. And because I put shape flex on here, the fabric shouldn't fray when it goes to even do the satin stitch. It should hold it pretty well. All right, so there is my red trimmed away. So guess what? I am now turning my page, and we are on page 21 at the top. All right, now I'm going to put white in. It says to put white in. I'm going to stitch the top layer satin stitch outline. So if you look here, it's going to do a satin stitch on both sides, left and right side of that top layer cake. Well, guess what? I'm not putting white in because we changed our color. We are going to put the red in because I want the top cake to look like it's red. My top layer. So I am threading my red in. Um, whenever you um, thread your machine, you should always cut the thread off at the top, pull it through the needle area, just like normal, the way the thread normally threads your machine. All right, and re-thread. So that's what I just did. going to hit start. It's going to move back to place where it stopped, and I'm going to hit start again, and this is going to stitch number four of the embroidery file and it's going to do a satin stitch on the right hand side and the left hand side of that top layer of my cake and remember again that we're doing it in red all right so we're switching this one up a, a great deal in this case because we just didn't like the way the colors were you know really wanted you know the cake to be red white and blue and why not put that right in order? And we did it all with the um, white icing. Um, or leather for the white icing to really kind of set it off a little bit. All right, that is done. Our next step is to look at where the icing is going to be placed. So I am taking my red thread out. I know my icing is white leather, so guess what? I'm loading white in because I don't really want to have, you know, this color red stitch through my white icing. All right. So I might, you know, the white I might not see as clearly on the background fabric when it shows me where to place my leather, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be able to figure it out. All right, having a little problem this time threading my needle. I think I need to trim that off. Oops, sorry. All 
go. All right, I'm gonna hit start. And I'm going to, um, now it's gonna show me where to put the white leather. Okay, so don't forget that we're using the white leather in two places. And I did not pre-cut my white leather. All right. So I'm gonna take that little thread out of there. It's a little jump stitch at the beginning. It didn't pick up. I've got my white leather. I'm gonna lay it face up. All right. I can see that it's overlaying the top of the red fabric and it comes out to here. Just a little bit beyond the top red um, satin stitch. So I'm just gonna line it up like on these two sides. And I'm gonna let all the rest of the leather just hang out there. And this way I'm not slapping the leather right down and you know, right putting the design right here in the middle and wasting my leather. I just, I just don't like that. So all I like to do is make sure that I have this bottom side covered and this um, right side covered. And I know there's extra both on the left and the top. So if you want to tape it in place, you can. I'm probably just going to hold it a little bit when it starts, but I'm going to hit start. I'm going to stitch number six of the embroidery file, which is the tack down of the frosting. Our frosting is in leather. The picture shows a pink grapefruit um, frosting color and the felt. But we are just not doing the felt. So it's doing like a little double stitch here. I mean, to me, I think the leather's gonna make it look like it's fonded icing on top of there. Okay. So now that that has stitched the leather, the next thing is to trim all around that. So I am going to uh, pull it out a little bit. I don't know if you can see what it looks like. You can kind of see it. So I want to trim my leather. So I'm going to pause while I trim it because I want to trim and I want to do a nice job. So I'm probably going to pull the hoop out and turn it left and right and upside down and all kinds of things like that to cut around this because it has like those hills and valleys. Okay, so I trimmed my leather. Now what I like, I don't know if you can see it, but I wanted to show you. I like to trim my leather a little bit away from the stitch line. It doesn't have a satin stitch to cover it up. So I just like to leave a little extra going around outside the stitches. All right. And then if I leave a little extra and I don't like it or it's not smooth or I want it, you know, maybe cut it closer, I still have a little bit there I could take off later if that's the case. So that's, you know, another reason why I kind of like, you know, cut it a little bit away. So that was the end of step 11, trimming our leather. In the picture, it shows the pink felt. All right, we're moving on to step 12. We are going to stitch number seven of the embroidery file, and it's gonna show me where to place the middle layer of our cake. So I'm gonna hit start. I still have white in, and that's good because our middle layer of cake is white. If you remember correctly, we're using the white stripe line and I did put shape flex on the back. All right, and let me trim that thread. So I can see here is my placement line again. So, you know, I'm gonna try and line, you know, it is straight across the bottom I'm probably going to try to line it up to maybe have um, my lines going straight. So I'm going to take this piece of fabric I have and I'm just going to trim off the very edge here at the one side. So I'm like kind of straight with a line on the fabric. You know, I mean, you don't have to do that. You might be able to eyeball it, but I feel better if I do that and then lay it down. And then I can see, you know, how far over on this side I need to come. 
So again, I just want to cover up this right side and then I'm going to look down here at the bottom and try to make that as straight across with some of the lines on the fabric as I can. Now, there's nothing that stops you from turning your fabric, you know, and do the stripes kind of on an angle. I'm trying not to do that. I'm just trying to get them to go straight. That's, you know, the way that I'm going to stitch mine. So now that I think I have this in place good, I'm going to hit start. It's going to tack down this fabric. And again, it does have shape flex on it. So it's going to be a little bit sturdier um, with the shape flex on the fabric than it would be without it. Now we are doing a satin stitch around this. So it is good that it will not have a raw edge at all. Now again, I put the shape flex on there for the real reason is I didn't want these, the gold or the yellow of these words showing through that white fabric, right, as my center layer of cake. I really didn't want those words popping through. So shape flex really helps block that shadowing underneath. And I am now working on step number 15 on that page, which, you know, I already tacked it down. So now I am trimming my fabric here close to the stitch line without cutting the stitch line. So I apologize if my hand gets in the way. But all I am doing is just trimming that all the way around. So I have this fabric I can set to the side because I'm done with that now. That's the scrap fabric. All right. The next step is number 16. And we're going to stitch the middle layer satin outline. Now our middle layer is white. I am going to stitch that whole outline in white. Okay. So I'm going to hit start. We're going to do that satin stitch and then we'll return and see what it looks like. All right. Almost done doing the satin stitch. It started here on the left. It's coming around to the right side. So when that is done, we will be on step 17. And 17 is to stitch the bottom layer placement line. Okay. And I still have my white in. That should be fine. I'll see where to place it. All right, so I'm going to hit start. I'm going to stitch number 10 of the embroidery line, of the embroidery file. It is the placement for the bottom layer of the cake. So again, we are doing a cake that is red, white, and blue. All right, so here is the blue fabric. Again, I applied shape flex to the back because I don't want that shadow through. So I can see here is my bottom of the cake right here. I can see that stitched. So I like to line up, you know, the, this right hand side in the bottom and then let the rest go. And again, if you wanted to, you know, I turn the fabric to the other side to see if you would like one way versus another way. You can do that. So I'm just going to kind of line it up here as best I can see it. All right. So once I'm happy where, where I have it, I don't think it's going to shift. It's laying there pretty nice. I'm not going to tape it. I'm going to hit start and I'm going to tack down this third layer. So red, white, and blue. Bad. So, of course, once it does its tack down of that blue, I now need to trim the blue away. All right. 
So again, get your, you know, applique scissors, whichever ones you prefer. And you want to start trimming the blue fabric away. Again, you want to cut close to the line, but don't cut the stitch lines because you want to keep that fabric still tacked down. Now, um, with the shape flex, it does help that the fabric's not going to fray. But, you know, I still rather, you know, not clip that, clip any of the stitching. And again, you're going in and out of these mountains. Mountains and valleys here with the way this is, the cake is. So I apologize for my hand probably going in front of the camera at this point as I go up and down. And again, I moved my hoop close to me. If you need to take your hoop off, there's nothing wrong with that. You can move your hoop to, you know, a table. Have something to set it on now. If you, if you are going to try and use your lap, then please get like a clipboard and set it in your lap and lay the hoop on that um, to do your trimming. I'm just trying to trim a little extra out of that little mountain and valley there. So... This is kind of what it looks like right now. So there's my red, my white, and my blue. I think it's going to look okay. Now this is not a dark blue. If you would like it to be the dark blue, you probably have um, a big enough scrap of that dark blue fabric that we supplied you with the hashes on it. You could have used that for your bottom layer too if you wanted to. I'm going to stay with this one. Um, what I wanted to point out was this is not the darkest blue. So I'm not going to do a dark blue icing line here on the side. I think I'm going to do the lighter blue icing. If that makes sense. So that's the next step is to actually stitch the satin on the right and left hand side of this cake layer like we did the red up here. So I think I'm going to do that in a lighter blue. All right, so I am getting ready to change my threads. That's probably the color I'm going to put in. So I'm going to um, pull out my white here. And then I'm going to get my blue loaded in. Come on. Sometimes I have a little static, you know, or a little piece of thread sticking out there that doesn't let me get it into the eye of the needle. All right, I'm going to hit start. My hoop's going to move back into place, and then I'll hit start again, and I'm going to stitch number 12 of the embroidery file, which is going to do that right and left-hand side satin stitch of our bottom layer, the blue layer of the cake. When this is done, I'm going to be putting the white back in because we're getting, you know, the next step is going to be doing that second icing layer here on top of the blue. And again, like the top layer, our icing is the leather. And that is exactly what is called for in the instructions in this case. Um, we just decided to do leather both for the first layer and the second layer of icing. All right, whereas in, the, in their instructions, they use the um, pink grapefruit um, felt. Um, I just didn't like the felt for that particular use. 
Okay, so I'm going to take my blue out here. I'm going to load my white in. And the first thing we're going to do is stitch our placement line of where to lay our felt. I mean, lay our leather down for this icing. And this is normal for applique, right? Show me where to put it. Give me the placement line. Okay, hit start. Show me the placement line. This is number 13 of the embroidery file. So I'm going to go dig out the rest of them. Here's my white leather. This is all I use so far. So I'm going to have that ready so I can place it down on here. I'm going to actually pull my hoop towards me more so I can see exactly where I'm placing my leather. So I have like, this is like a straight line going across there. So I don't know if I put my straight line across there, if I can cover all this and it looks like I can, I can really conserve this leather and have enough left to maybe even you do another cake without buying any more leather. And that's another reason why I didn't cut. I tried to cut the piece big and I didn't cut them into separate pieces when I go to do this. So I'm lining this up above that straight line and I'm not seeing here any of the icing stitches. And this goes beyond where it needs to go on this side. And if you're not comfortable doing this, then use the whole other side of the leather. All right, so that's kind of what mine looks like right now. So I have all this icing covered up. So I'm going to tack this down now, and it is going to probably do like a double stitch like it did before. First, my machine's moving back into place, and I'm probably just gonna hold my hand here on the one side and let it start. Once it starts stitching, the leather really shouldn't shift at all. So you can see it going straight across there. And it is doing like a little double stitch because it does not do a satin stitch around the leather, okay? That is the finished stitch, exactly what you see. And that's another reason why when I go to trim this, I like to leave just a little leather beyond the stitch line. So I'm going to trim that leather and we will be back. All right. So let's see if I could show you. Not too bad. You can see I trimmed the leather all the way around. All right. So red, white, and blue is our cake. So we just finished up page 21 of the instructions. All right. Because the last piece there was trimming that leather icing so I'm going to turn to page 22 our next step is to put in our like silver color all right so try to get a color thread that matches your silver leather and we want to stitch the placement line for the cake tray all right so I'm gonna hit start and stitch number 15 of the embroidery file and again, this is the cake tray. Now, some of you got two pieces of silver, leather. Uh, one was thinner or not as um, wide as the other one. So you need the wider one for this particular um, project because it is the stand. The other little um, piece of leather that's um, not as wide it's like a one inch or an inch and a half wide is the actual tin for the pie so that does not have to be as you know as wide as um, the stand so I can see my stand all right so here I can either line the stand up here along the straight there at the top and just let the stand come down 
and place it or I can go this way and line it up making sure that I covered this side of the stand and the pedestal down here like this and then I would be cutting it straight across so I just need to make sure that if you have the big piece of leather that you line up your leather either at the top across the straight line or the bottom you know and then another side because you're going to need this other piece of leather up here for the pie tin so it's up to you which way you want to line it up so i think what i'm going to do to help not to cut a straight line because i think this is straight i'm going to use the straight line and i'm going to line it up at the top and I'm going to make sure that I have like the right side covered. I'm going to go just above that stitch line, just over that stitch line there. And to play everything safe, I'm going to actually put a little piece of tape down here outside of where it's going to stitch. And I'm putting one on that side. All right, so I'm just going to hold that in place as I move my hoop back up underneath. And I'm going to hit start, and now I'm going to tack down my cake stand. All right, so here we go, start. Now I'm going to assume it's probably going to do a double stitch again, right? Get in there. Oh, so maybe it does a satin stitch to cover it all up. Is that what it's going to do? Oh, it does a decorative outline. So it's just going to go around it twice. Alright. So I just finished that. So the next thing to do, looking at my instructions is number 29 at the top of page 22 and we're going to trim the leather close to the stitch line all right so that's what we're going to accomplish right now i don't know if my hand will get in the way as i cut so i apologize for that ahead of time I just have to trim a little bit off at this top edge here. I lined it up just a little too far away to me. But that was fine. Better that than not enough and it didn't catch. All right. I'm going to come down this side over here. Now I want to take this to the corner, or almost to the corner. Sorry about my hand, and now I'm going to start coming down this pedestal. And I'm kind of lifting the um, leather up as I cut, because it just makes it easier for me to cut, you know, close to that line by lifting it a little bit. Going up the other side of the pedestal. And I don't want to go too close to that stitch line. Just enough. Now match up with that circle. So that's what I have right now. I have a little piece here that didn't round the corner. So I'm going to round that off. And I'm just going to come in here and trim now up this side. I just was a little further away than I really want to be. All right. So there's what our cake pedestal looks like right now. So our next step is number 17 of the embroidery file, and we're going to do the decorative outline 
on the pedestal. So I'm going to do that in silver. I really want it to match what's there. So as I hit start, of course, my hoop is moving back in place. I hit start again, and I'm going to do that decorative outline. So the decorative outline will not cover up that stitch that you just did. So if you actually did your tack down stitch, let's say in a black, you're going to see that color underneath. So you really want to use, you know, as close a color as you would like um, of the silver leather or whatever color you wanted to do that stitching with. If you wanted to highlight this all in black, then do it all in black. Normally we kind of match the color that's there. All right. When this is done, we will be doing the small pinwheel placement line. And that is going to be in red leather. So when this is done stitching, we're going to be changing our thread out to red. And we're going to get our red leather. Again, remember we didn't cut our leather. So I have these circles there. I'm not going to worry about cutting it. We're going to do the placement line for the pinwheel. And then I'll just set this all in there. Because I feel if I cut this, I'm going to be wasting it. So it's almost done with the decorative stitching. And then I'm going to load my red in. Alright, I load it red in. You can see I did this decorative stitch all the way around. My cake stand looks really nice. I'm now going to stitch number 18 of the embroidery file and it's going to show me where to put the red leather for the red pinwheel okay i'm just going to trim my little tail off there so there is my red leather and the next thing is to place the red leather over top the stitching so i'm going to actually just put it Line it up on the bottom part of my leather. Make sure I'm covering my design. Make sure this right hand side covers the design. That's where my leather is going to stay. I'm going to hit start and now I'm going to tack down my pinwheel, the red one. So I'm stitching number 19 of the embroidery file. And it's actually doing like a decorative stitch on this leather. doing that outside line and some detail um, stitching here. All right. So in the picture on, on um, page 22 on number 33 instruction, you can see kind of the black dotted lines and on picture 34, again, those black dotted lines of kind of where you need to cut your wet leather. I'm going to cut my leather a little bit away, right? I'm going to leave a little bit of leather outside these, these stitch lines. I don't like to cut it real close to the stitch line. I'm going to do the same thing here with this red leather piece. All right, I'm going to leave some leather to the outside. I can always come back in when I'm done. And cut it closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm really going to um, trim this up as like an X. Or I mean a square. <clears throat> so that it makes it easier for me not to have all that leather on the one side. And then I can see exactly where I'm cutting. Come in on the one. Then we go up this curve. So 
Sorry about my hand. That doesn't look too bad. I think that looks okay. Let's see, how close are you guys? Not too close. So. Can you see my, can you see that decorative stitching it has? So that is the red pinwheel. Now we're gonna change the color to blue and we're gonna put the blue um, placement line up here and lay the blue leather down and do the same thing. So again, I'm gonna suggest that you kind of match as close as you can the leather because here's the blue leather to the color blue that you want to stitch with. So I am looking for a darker blue than I have out. So. So just going through my colors real quick. I didn't pick out that blue I kind of like this blue I think it, it it'll blend better with the leather so I'm gonna pick this blue so I am going to load that blue in of course I'm going to remove the red all right get my spool of blue out thread my machine Thread the needle. Need to trim that end off again because it's fraying a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm gonna hit start. My hoop's gonna move back to play into place. Oh, oh. No. Well, good thing I didn't get too far. All right. So my hoop I unhooked. I need to hook it back in. That's what I did wrong. So at least I caught myself that time. All right. Now it started the stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up a color and then I'm going to come back to this stitch so I start off with the first stitch again in the right place this time since now I have my hoop hooked in. Lucky for me, the hoop wasn't in a bad spot and I didn't break the needle. Right? That's what we want to watch for. All right, so we're going to stitch now number 20 of the embroidery file. I'm on step 35. So it's going to show me where to place the blue leather. Now remember it told me for this piece here. I think you need to cut a two inch by two inch piece of leather and you can see that that would be really um, a really big piece of leather that you don't need it as big as that. So that's why I don't like to pre-cut the leather. Just take the piece that you have, line up two sides and let the rest overhang. It's going to line up that bottom side, line up this right side here. Hit start, I'm gonna tack down the leather and it's probably gonna do a decorative stitch in it too, just like it did the red. And then when it's done, it's gonna have an outline and you can see the dotted lines on instruction number 37. There's a white um, dash line and on step 38, it shows you that you're gonna cut just a little bit outside of what they think what they show you as a white dash line. So we're gonna let all this decorative stitching stitch out and then we're gonna trim this blue leather. And guess what? That's it, this block will be done soon as this leather is trimmed. But just like all the other blocks, I'm not trimming the block to size yet. I will do that all at the end. 
it does show you at the bottom of page 22 that um, you're going to use the uh, six and a half by eight and a half and the eight and a half by ten and a half inch ruler. So that means we're going to be cutting it twice. You're going to cut it the um, six and a half or the. Um, it's going to finish at six and a half wide, but ten and a half long. All right. Okay, so it just finished my blue. There's my blue pinwheel. And now I need to trim around the blue felt. Okay. So do you know, use the embroidery scissors that you like the best. Remember to cut on a flat surface. So if you're going to take your hoop and lay it somewhere, lay it on something flat. I'm, I still have mine like on my table here right by my embroidery machine. And this is what I was talking about. Sometimes you want to like just turn your hoop all the way around to cut some of the um, appliques out. All right. So that's kind of what my blue leather looks like has a small hole in the bottom again it, it's me I like to conserve as much product as I can so this is what the cake looks like so we are done doing the cake so we are soon going to be on page 24 of the instructions we're going to work on the pot and the flour next so I will be back and we're going to talk about the pieces that we need and start the flower pot.